so far we've been looking at an electron and using the wave-like nature of the electron to do some calculations. We can do this with other particles also. And when you calculate the wavelength of a particle, that's called the de Broglie wavelength. The de Broglie wavelength is equal to Planck's constant divided by the mass times the speed. The mass must be measured in kilograms, and the speed has to be measured in meters per second. And this will give you the wavelength in meters. It's a little bit complicated because Planck's constant has units of joules in there, and a joule is a kilogram meter squared per second squared. And so this is why you have to use these units in order to get your answer in meters. So for example, we could calculate the de Broglie wavelength of a much larger particle than an electron. We could calculate it for a 50 gram bullet that's traveling 860 meters per second. The de Broglie wavelength is Planck's constant divided by the mass, and the mass is in grams, so we have to convert grams into kilograms and then the speed is already in the correct unit of 860 meters per second. The units don't look like they're going to cancel correctly. We got rid of our grams and we're going to have joules in the numerator this seconds is in the denominator of the denominator, so this makes seconds squared, divided by kilogram and meters. So if I substitute in the definition of a joule, a joule is a kilogram meter squared per second squared, and that's just that part of our unit, and then we still have seconds squared divided by kilogram and meter, you can see the second squared is going to cancel the second squared. Kilogram cancels kilogram, and meter cancels one of those meters. So we're left with our de Broglie wavelength in meters, and this works out to be 1.54 times 10 to the negative 35th meters. The de Broglie wavelength for a macroscopic particle, like a bullet, is extremely small. 10 to the negative 35th meters is so small. That's why macroscopic particles don't have an observable wavelength.